G'day, it's Robbie again. Well, anyone that watches my channels knows that I've got an old Shorblin, this one here, an old Shorblin 102 that I bought of eBay years ago as a total wreck. And I did it up and now it's it's a beautiful machine and I use it all the time, mainly for collet work. Anyway, I always keep my, my eyes open for Shorblin bits. You know, like they're as scarce as hen's teeth, but occasionally bits come along. And one day I was looking on Gumtree and blow me down, there was this ad that uh, popped up. And here are all the bits. There's the tail stock, which is definitely Shorblum. Same as the head stock. It's a heavy one. And the Shorblum always stamp numbers under their uh, head stocks and tail stocks. This one's number 28. And it's cam lock. And it all looks to be there. It looks like a Morse 2. It's certainly bigger than the original 102s which were uh, smaller than a Morse 1 and they converted them to Morse 1s afterwards a lot of people, mine's been converted so that's definitely Shorblin but I did notice it's interesting that it screws in the reverse direction for some weird <laughs> so it's going anti-clockwise to extend, I don't know what's going on there but that'll need looking at but definitely Shorblin definitely Shorblin the cross slide the cross light is not Shorblin. The cross light is not Shorblin at all, and I don't know what it is. In fact, I'd be really pleased if anybody out there recognises what this is. But it's not a Shorblin compound. In fact, it's not even meant for the type of bed that it's on. And they've been clamping it on with just a couple of bolts and a plate to pull it up from underneath so keep it all in position and if this guy was a tool maker well that's pretty bodgy so there you go folks anybody out there in video land youtube land knows what this is let me know it looks to be in pretty good condition but definitely not shorblin so for the last couple of years this thing's been laying around in the shed I use the uh, tail stock off the off the lathe and did it up, and that's what you saw in the in the opening clip. But this thing, this this is this is the compound that was on it. And this has really had me puzzled for a long time. What is it? You know, it's it's not Shoblin, not even in a million years, and. It, you can see what they've done. You can see what they've done. They've done if you look at this thing. It's actually, it's actually part of a lathe bed that's been doctored. Now this thing originally had. You can see what they've done. This thing originally had wings that came out here and here, and I also assume here and here and it's the old style setup as you would see I want to say a hercus or something like that so to make it fit on a toolmaker's lathe <laughs> nice and dodgy they've just chopped off the wings which are part of the of that where you know the viso that fits on the ways, uh, here's your prismatic way here, and uh, they've turned it into a very crappy toolmaker's compound cross slide. They put a bolt at a 
block on the bottom here. Jordan tapped a couple of holes, so it sat on the bed on this steel block. And that way you got over all the irregularities and it would, well, you couldn't pivot it because the bolt holes, being more than one bolt, it wouldn't let the thing twist in the centre slot. So the whole thing was crap. And, uh, but anyway, it had me intrigued. I thought, what the hell is this thing? You know, I was sure I knew what it was originally. Yeah, it would, originally had four wings that came out and it went uh, on a conventional power uh, cross-feed lathe. Now I looked at this thing and I thought, okay, what size is it? So I, st I put it on the the old uh, the Chinese lathe, which is a 10-inch swing, to see how the the top of the cross slide lines up in comparison to the, to the swing. And I'll do it and I'll show you how it looks. Right. You can see straight away that this is lower than this top slide as far as the top of it's concerned by quite a margin by a good by a good inch so this is a 10 inch swing lathe this compound is meant for a 9 inch swing lathe you can see straight away we're in the ballpark so it gives you something to go on so yep 9 inch swing lathe for sure it's interesting when you look at the way they've done this, they've ground through or cut it with a cut-off wheel and they've left it as a rough finish really. Whereas back here where they've cut off the other wing on both sides, it's smooth and you think, oh, well maybe there wasn't wings there, that's what sort of throws you. But then when you add two and two and two together, you know, you eventually get six and you figure out when you're in a finger along this that it's got waves in it. It hasn't been done on a machine, it's been done, somebody's done it with an angle grinder with a friction disc in it, a sanding disc, and they've just smoothed out that to get this <laughs> and slopped a bit of paint on it with a brush. God almighty. It just shows you what people get up to. I originally thought this could have been Hercus. It's got that Hercus shaped cross slide. But I know for a fact that Herkers don't have their pinch bolts for the, uh, the top slide pivot. Herkers don't have their pinch bolts on the back side of the pivot point. They have them on the front side. So it's definitely not Herkers. And I thought there's one lathe I do know that has them on the back. has the Herkers style cross slide on some configurations has a spigot at the back like that and it has controls and handles and scales that look like this and that's South Bend 9A so I'm pretty sure this is, in fact I'm positive this is off of a 9A South Bend South Bend oil points here and here and you can see how they've got this typical South Bend cross slide with the, the nut head showing but on the top slide it doesn't show that's typical South Bend as are the the scale was the way they've done them. So yeah, I'm 100% certain it's South Bend. Look on the bottom, that's how South Bend did their castings. The slot, and you can see on the back, it's typical South Bend, the way they've got their open uh, top section and the dovetails. That's, that's how South Bend did it. So, yep, she's definitely South Bend. Mystery solved. The other giveaway is the two holes on the side of the, of the cross slide. That only appears on one side on South Bend's. And if we turn it around, you can 
and see that's how it is. So this is, yeah, that's pure South Bend. You can see here the zero midpoint next to the spigot and that would have been for a degree scale on the original top slide that went with this and you can actually see the patina, the rub mark, the curvature. See there, coming around. So that's where the original top slide would have would have rubbed and the degrees would have been there and lined up with that. So this is definitely a replacement, an aftermarket top slide. The interesting thing that with it though is that they have used the original South Bend uh, handle and uh, scale. So they fitted that on. Whatever, whoever made this, this is either genuine South Bend, an accessory from South Bend, or they've gone to the trouble of fitting the bits from the original top slide onto this top slide, which I find hard to believe. I, I'm sort of leaning towards the, the feeling that this could be a genuine South Bend top slide aftermarket one. Uh, I don't know, I could be wrong, but yeah, maybe not, maybe not. I mean, if it was, surely it would have provision for a degree degree ring on it and as, as it is it hasn't got anything like that in fact it comes down very close to that bolt look at that it will touch it once again you're using it in this position here so that well, it could fail on that one yeah no, I don't reckon that that is genuine South Bend. I reckon it's it's uh, aftermarket. Pretty interesting. Pretty interesting stuff. You never know what you got sometimes when you buy gear. So there you have it. Mystery solved after all this time. Bit of detective work, and it just it just shows you what can happen to this old stuff you buy, you know, it can get really played around with and messed with. In this case, somebody really got into it big time and yeah, it's uh, surprising what happens. So is it junk? No, it's not junk, it's actual money because you try and buy an you know, old South Bend bits and pieces, particularly ones in good condition, and this is all pretty much in great condition except for the butchered base when well, you forget about that but the cross slide top slide everything yeah it's all money for the right person if someone's someone that's interested in this stuff yeah this is this is worth dough so you know i'll just put it away and one day somebody who's into this stuff might tap me on the shoulder and say hey rob you still got that uh, south bend stuff laying around and i'll say yeah, yeah, I have actually, and uh, you can have it for the right price. <laughs> you know, yep, pay out one hand and you get back with the other. That's how metalwork uh, projects go. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this. Got something interesting out of it, and uh, this shows you how you can evaluate this stuff, things you've got to think about, and uh, well. It must be beer time. So that's it from me, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.